Alright guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Vincent Petla and I'm back with another YouTube video. So in today's YouTube video, we're going to be talking about 12 photography myths. So guys, let's get right into it. Myth number one is, I'm not going out to shoot today because the light is bad. Yeah, no, as photographers, we do say that a lot. Like, uh, I'm not going out today to shoot or I'm not going to be shooting at a specific time because the lighting is bad outside. Yeah, I think it is something that does hold you back as a creative sometimes saying that you're not going to shoot at a specific time because of the light. Because usually most photographers you will hear, even me, sometimes myself, I'd be like, no, I only want to shoot at like, what is it, golden hour. Like most of the shoots, I try to do them at golden hour. But golden hour is usually that time just before the sun is about to set or the time before the sun is just as, as the sun is rising. The light is a bit like goldish. And it's not as harsh as it is when it's midday, like around 12 o'clock. So I would say that holds you back. You need to try different things. Shoot uh, in like direct sunlight, see what you can do. Like you can shoot in the shade while it's direct sunlight. Or you can do a whole of, there's a whole lot of different things you can use. Also different equipment that you can use to make your experience of shooting in the sun uh, much better and get some creative shots. You can work with the harsh shadows that you get a lot of different things you can do with this whole thing of shooting uh, in whatever time of day. Even some days you find that it's not a sunny day, it's an overcast day. There's kind of there's some nice moody pictures that you can get in such situations when it's an overcast day, especially when you're using flash or fill, you're using fill light. There's a lot of creative pictures that you can come up with, even if the light is not good, even like on a rainy day, those rainy day shots can get some nice pictures there you don't always have to have the best lighting you just be able you just need to be able to make something creative out of what you've got with the lighting you've got okay so the second myth is i need to bring several lenses with me on my photo shoot walk just in case okay yeah we uh, i at first i think when i was starting out as a photographer i would also say that to myself no i need to bring this lens in case that happens bring that lens in case that happens but uh, as I've uh, evolved and learned through the de uh, times as a photographer, I've seen that I think you, you have to go out with a mindset of what exactly, is the, what exactly do you want to capture as a photographer when you go out for a photography walk. For instance, this would be like if you're just going for a walk in your neighborhood with your camera. Do you want to bring your backpack with lenses and be weighed down by it? Or do you just want to go out with one lens on your camera? For instance, like taking your 85mm f1.8 lens, you know you're just going to only get tight shots with that because it's more of a portrait lens. Or do you want to take your more wider lens, like a 35mm lens? All those things, 35mm lens, which would be mostly used for more of like landscaped picture, landscape pictures. So 35mm is not that wide, but it's wide enough for landscape pictures compared to your... 85 mil lens which is mostly used for portraits i would say again also taking one taking one lens allows you to focus on just taking pictures not worrying about oh i see this picture opportunity but i think i should change to this specific lens like for instance if you have your 85 millimeter lens on the camera and you're like no i feel like i want to use my 35 millimeter lens uh, you see, you might end up missing the shot because you're trying to change the lens. So if you have one lens, you're more, you're less likely to miss shots because you're trying to change lenses. And it allows you to become more creative because you're only focusing on uh, worrying about the shots and what shots you can get with that specific lens. You're not worrying about what shots could I get with that other lens that I have in my bag. You're just worried about creating something and making something interesting from the lens that you have. You're worrying about composition, the type of composition that you can get from the lens that you are using. Okay, so myth number three is I shoot a thousand frames in a day that I increase my chances of having a lot of keepers. Okay, yeah, shooting a thousand pictures a day is not good. I'm still in the process of learning that between shooting a lot of pictures and just shooting enough pictures, just shooting the pictures that I want. Because sometimes you go out you shoot a whole lot of different things and you just press that shutter and hold it down and you just snap away uh, hoping that you get some good pictures. Like during this period of uh, the lockdown, I was going around shooting some pictures, just uh, working on my composure, working on my camera knowledge, working on knowing if I do specific things with my cameras, 
what am I going to get, how my exposure works, working on knowing aperture, when I'm shooting at a specific aperture, what am I going to get? Like, for instance, you know, if you're shooting at f1.8, you're going to get a blurry, quite a bit of a blurry background. But then if you want to shoot a landscape, you don't want to be shooting at f1.8. You want to be ideally shooting at something above like f points, f, f11 to get the whole landscape fully in focus. So all of those things are learning curves that you need to learn. The more you understand your camera, the less shots you'll, you'll need to take of a specific subject because you know what you need to do to be able to get your shot properly in focus, properly lit, and the composition all right. So a thousand photos, it's, yeah. And then again, the more pictures you take, the more work you have. You don't need to take so many. The, less, the more pictures you take, the more work you have. If you take less pictures, less work you have. So meaning... You know if you've taken like 50 pictures, you just need to work through those 50 pictures and decide how many of those 50 pictures that you need to edit. Maybe you say, I might need to edit 10 out of those pictures, 10 pictures out of those 50, and you're like, okay, those are the pictures I need to work with. Now if you've taken 100 and then you're still only going to edit 10, you've taken a whole lot of unnecessary time because now you have to go through all those 100 pictures and see which pictures you want. And that time you find that it's like 10 of the same, 10 pictures of the same thing where you could have just taken one or two pictures of the same thing and you are just, you know that you can pick through those pictures. Uh, so basically what I'm trying to say is you've got to make every frame count to the best of your ability. you rather shoot like you're shooting on film and you know you only have 25 film exposures. So the next myth we're going to look at is uh, myth number four, which is I can't shoot because I forgot my tripod. Okay, uh, personally, I've not shot that many things on a tripod, so yeah, I've never really experienced that, the whole thing of, yeah, I can't shoot because I've got my tripod, tri uh, because I've got my tripod. Most of the things that I've shot have been mostly handheld, because most of the time I only shoot uh, on a tripod when I'm shooting videos. I'm still in the space of trying to le learn how to shoot some landscape pictures and l what, what we call you know, landscape pictures and uh, long exposure pictures which need your tripod like when you're shooting way under 1 over 60 because if you guys know your handheld rule for photography handheld rule for photography you can't shoot uh, under the shutter speed of 1 over 60 hold, uh, holding your camera handheld because if you shoot holding handheld under that shutter speed of 1 over 60 you're going to get a lot of camera shake in your pictures so your pictures are not going to be clear it's going to be a bit of jittering. So I did you want to shoot, up, shoot above 1 over 60. Usually I try to shoot at least above 1 over 100 or to 1 over 200. If I, have, if I have enough light in my camera, I would love to shoot above 1 over 100 or 1 over 200. So, those, so yeah, not shooting on a tripod again liberates you to get a whole lot of different angles, different vantage points, shoot different angles, meaning now you're not limited to the tripod. I can go low to the ground, shoot some pictures low to the ground, or I can lift my hand to a specific way or angle the camera in a specific direction or a specific way that I want to angle the camera. So shooting with the tripod does limit you a bit, but it can also be good for you if you are going to try and shoot a specific thing. Tripod is good for your long exposure shots and your time lapses and all these other different things. You can also use it in the studio if you're doing studio work, but just pick what you need to use the tripod for. Don't always say you need to have a tripod when you want to shoot uh, pictures. Okay, so myth number five is I'm in a creative rut. I need to go to an exotic location to get out of it. Yeah, no, that is a myth. You don't really need to go to an exotic location to get out of the creative rut that you're in. Basically, you just need to go out to where you are and just look at the ordinary things that you see in a creative way. Try and see how can I make this ordinary thing that I'm seeing look more interesting than it is. That is what you need to do. Make something that is looking ordinary look more creative than it is. And don't put too much pressure on yourself to try and get the best picture every day. Some days you might find something that you like that you are able to look at it in a creative way. Other days it might just not be your day for coming up with a creative thing. Especially when you're just doing photography for yourself. You're just trying to be creative to post content onto your social media. Take it day by day. 
there are some days you might not find something as creative uh, go on creative photo walks creative photo walks can become treasure hunts of interesting things that you can see as you're walking around with your camera just taking pictures take pictures of your environment in creative ways you might find that there's something that you're just looking at and you see okay this looks interesting i think this can can tell a specific story you can just make anything that you see as you're walking look interesting okay myth number six is i would take better pictures only if i had a better camera yeah i know that is a big myth guys you wouldn't take you you can't take better pictures if you have a better camera if you don't know how to use the camera in the first place like if you don't know how to shoot fully manual on a camera no matter the camera you get if you get like a 1dx or a 5d camera you're not going to be able to take better pictures because you don't know how the camera works so i would say first learn with the camera that you've got probably even if you have like your 1300 or 1200d canon like for instance i started out with a canon 1200d learning uh, learning my craft now i'm shooting on an eos r and i'm still learning some of the things on the eos r but learning on that 1200d how to take nice pictures and try uh, learning on that 1200d how to take nice pictures uh, it was a big learning curve big big learning curve because some of the things it doesn't have good low light capabilities it doesn't have that many megapixels it doesn't shoot that fast and all of those things but i managed to push the camera to its limits because i think one of the biggest things that people don't do that they don't do is push their cameras to its limit before you upgrade to any a newer more expensive camera try and push the camera that you have to its limits you gotta push it to its limits fully understand that camera how that camera operates and fully understand the basics of uh, photography before you upgrade to another camera like for instance when you're starting out you first need to make sure that you understand the exposure triangle the exposure triangle i hope you guys know what the exposure triangle is the exposure triangle is uh, shutter speed aperture and your iso those three things are what makes up the exposure triangle so if you get you need to balance all three of those things to get a properly balanced picture that is pro properly lit balanced the lighting is perfect so if you understand that and your camera you start you pushing your camera to the limits then i would say you can go and upgrade your camera to get a better camera camera that shoots better low light pictures or it's just better has better dynamic dy dynamic range and all of those different things the colors pop and all of that but until you understand your exposure your exposure triangle and other things that you need to know like your handheld rule of 1 over 60 you shouldn't shoot under 1 over 60 and all of those different things i would not i wouldn't advise you to go upgrade your camera because you'll just be wasting your money okay so myth number seven is i'm too old to learn how to use a digital camera okay yeah no Nobody's ever too old to really learn how to use a digital camera. I think a digital camera is the easiest thing that you can ever learn how to use, especially with the auto settings. I'm not sure if uh, your, what is it? Your film cameras have digital settings like auto setting, but your digital camera is auto setting. So meaning the camera does all the work for you. All you need to do is just point and shoot at what you want to shoot at. So it is easy to learn how to use a digital camera like for instance i would advise people to start out on shooting a uh, full auto in the camera and just learn how to get the perfect compositions for their pictures before they move on to trying to use all the other different settings on the camera for instance like for, for instance i would say a person would move from full auto to either aperture priority or shutter priority and then once they've understood shutter priority or aperture priority, then they would move all the way down to full manual where you have control over everything in the exposure triangle. So your shutter speed, your aperture and your shutter speed. So for instance, for those guys who are curious, what is shutter priority? Shutter priority is when you have full control over your shutter speed. So basically you, sh you set the shutter speed that you want to shoot at and then the camera will set the ISO that you're going to shoot at and also the aperture that you're going to shoot at is going to set those things for you. So it's basically like a, still like automatic but the only thing you are controlling is your shutter speed. And aperture priority is when you set your aperture, you have full control over your aperture 
and the camera sets your shutter speed and sets your ISO for you. So those are functions that will help you uh, learn all the all those different things in the exposure triangle to help you make your photograph your photography better. So it's easy to learn how to use a digital, digital camera. You follow all of those things and there's a lot of YouTube videos out there that teach you the basics of how to use a digital camera in this day and age. Myth number eight is I'm making money with my photography. I've learned everything there was to learn about the craft. Yeah, no. Even if you're making money from your craft of photography, it doesn't mean you've learned everything that there is to learn about photography. Guys, because every day, personally, as a photographer, I'm learning different things, new things that I didn't know. Working with different people, they teach me a whole lot of different things that I didn't think of. They've also learned while they're doing their craft of photography. Things that make your life simple, things that help you to improve your photography, and things that make you help you to become a more creative photographer. Learning simple things, like for instance, understanding what type of settings you need to use when you're doing photography during golden hour golden hour to get a specific fill in your pictures what aperture should you be using when you want to get bokeh bokeh like a lot of bokeh like for instance i know when you want to get a lot of bokeh you want to shoot on a long lens a long lens like an 85 mil 85 mil lens at f1.8 and you'll be able to get that beautiful bokeh that's like blurring out the background behind your subject. Uh, for instance, for, uh, for just for interest, if for those who don't know, we don't call that blurred background that you get in pictures blurred background, we call it bokeh. Yeah, that's just an, a little tidbit. It's called bokeh. So yeah, when you're making money from photography, you've not learned everything. There's still a lot that you can learn uh, in the photography world like ex especially like in the post editing world of photography like when it comes to either using Lightroom or Photoshop like currently Lightroom or Photoshop are one of the two biggest platforms that you can use to edit your pictures there are other platforms that other people do use but most people generally use Lightroom or Photoshop like for instance Lightroom is a whole lot easier to use and learn especially when you're doing batch editing which which is what I do a lot I do a lot of batch editing because I do a, a lot of event photography and studio shoots so I prefer to do batch editing in Photoshop I mean not in Photoshop in Lightroom because I can take the preset I can take the attributes that I've put on a specific picture and copy them to the other pictures and then just go into the other pictures and then uh, finally adjust those details the colors and things on those pictures to look the way I want them to look and then again it's easier to make pictures look more consistent in Lightroom than it is in Photoshop. Photoshop is a good tool for editing pictures it gives you a whole lot more creativity it gives you a whole lot more room to be creative with the picture that you're editing like you can edit the eyes in a specific way you can edit the person's face in a specific way you can do high-end skin retouching with Photoshop you can change the color of the background of where the picture was in Photoshop. You can change the color of peasants' clothes in Photoshop. There's a whole lot of different things you can do in Photoshop. So it's all about learning which platform, which platform is used for what. What do you use Lightroom for? What do you use Photoshop for? So I would say there isn't, you have never reached the point where you know everything in this photography industry. Myth number nine is, I need hundreds of pictures in my portfolio before I can show my work to clients. Okay, guys, you don't need to have hundreds of pictures in your portfolio to be able to start showing clients or your potential clients your pictures. You just need to put the best work, put your best work in your portfolio, work that you are proud of, work that you say which signifies your touch, basically your touch, the type of photography that you do, and people will be able to see this is what they can expect from you if they were to hire you as their photographer. That's what I would say. You don't need to have hundreds of pictures in your portfolio. You just need to have a few good pictures in your portfolio. Once you start getting more clients and you start doing more, a whole lot more photography, you will have a whole lot more pictures in your portfolio. So the more you shoot, the bigger your portfolio will become. But as you're starting out now, the few pictures that you have in your portfolio, which are high quality pictures, good pictures, uh, those pictures will do for your portfolio for now. 
Uh, myth number 10 is being a photographer is a glamorous job. Yes, it is a glamorous job. You get to take pictures of interesting people. I got to take pictures of uh, Cuesta. got to take pictures of Casper Novest. And uh, who's this? Another artist, Java. Like, so it's an interesting job. You get to take pictures of famous people. But then again, it is not, al- it's not always as glamorous as it seems. Because behind the scenes, guys, you are running a business. Again, you must remember, you can't just be taking pictures for free and not making money off of it. Because what are you going to eat? If you're just taking pictures for free and you're not making money off them, you're going to be, you're going to starve, basically. You're not going to have anywhere to live. So you got to remember you're running a business. And then again, also one of the things people don't realize is that you take pictures for three hours. And those pictures, after three hours of taking pictures, you're left with so many amounts of pictures that you need to edit. And those pictures can take longer than the time it took to take those pictures. You can spend like two to three days editing the pictures that you have from a gig. So it is a lot of hard work. It's hard work taking the pictures and it's hard work getting the pictures done. Like when I mean done, like edited, ready to be sent out to the client for them to be able to use them for whatever they want to use them for. So it's hard, time-consuming work, but it is uh, rewarding at the end of the day. Myth number 11 is all you need to be successful as a pro is talent. No, guys, not, that's not the only thing you need to be. You, you need to be successful as a professional photographer. You need to have the skill, you need to have dedication, and you need to be committed to your craft. Because if you're not committed to your craft, guys it's not going to work out because as a photographer you're always learning you're always improving your skill the more pictures you take the better you get and you also got to be able to listen to criticism and be like when a person tells you like i think maybe you could have done this to improve your photo a bit you could have done this and be willing to listen to other people when they tell you like no man i think i suggest you do i suggest you do this in your next photo this might make your picture look better uh, this is how I go about doing specific things. If you're not willing to listen to other people, get criticism from other people, your craft won't get any, won't get any better. Because talent alone is not going to help you uh, be the best photographer you can be. Talent is going to get you somewhere, but at a certain point, you're going to need to improve your skill. You're going to need to know all the things that you need to know as a photographer, like your exposure triangle, your different lenses, what your different lenses are. You need to know your aperture, what is aperture. You need to know what is your exposure, basically like your shutter speed and all those different things that uh, come into play when you're taking photos. Okay, myth number 12 is professional photographers are better than amateur photographers. Yeah, yes and no. Professional photographers are most likely to be better than amateur photographers. But at some, sometimes you do find that some amateur photographers do take better pictures than professional photographers. The thing about that is that sometimes professional photographers do get into a rut, not a rut or probably a rhythm of just taking pictures for the sake of taking pictures, just making money off of those pictures. Whereas amateur photographers take pictures with the intention of creating good work to impress people Whereas a professional photographer sometimes just gets into that rut of like, I'm already, people know who I am. My work is, speaks for itself already. He doesn't try to improve his work or try to be extra creative. It's just like, my work is my work. It's good enough already. So yeah, there is that situation that sometimes an amateur photographer is better than a professional, but most likely, uh, most likely on average, your professional photographer is way better than your amateur photographer because they have a full understanding of their equipment, how their equipment operates. They have a full understanding of the exposure triangle and uh, how to use their camera and what equipment they need to use to get a specific shot. Whereas an amateur photographer is still learning their exposure triangle and all of the equipment that they use while taking pictures. And they're also still learning how to use your Lightroom and Photoshop to best get the best edits because guys you need to remember that the photos that you get straight out of the camera are one thing sometimes they decent they look decently nice but you still need to apply a bit of post editing to make the pop, the picture pop to look amazing because some of the pictures that you see on instagram that's not those pictures don't come straight out of the camera like that 
the guys do a whole lot of post editing in the a whole lot of post editing to those pictures for those pictures to come out the way they are for them to pop look like just amazing when you look at them on instagram so that was 12 uh, photography myths that i've covered in this video guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please leave a like and a comment below and please subscribe i'll catch you guys in the next video until then catch you later Bye.